Hi Simplicity, today we have Dr. Ramya Jairam with us. She's a gynecologist at Women's Center and a mother too. In India, there are a lot of myths involved about pregnancy and motherhood. So we have the doctor herself to break some of the biggest myths. Hello doctor, motherhood has evolved over the years. What difference do you see in the mothers of today and mothers of yesterday? The mothers of today are definitely better informed than the mothers of yesterday because they have more access to information whether it is books or whether it is you know going online looking up websites uh, they know what to expect during a pregnancy and you know during labor which i think wasn't there with mothers even i would say 10 years back but now you know they're well read and they're well informed so that's definitely a big difference that we see the lot of myths that are involved uh, with pregnancy and motherhood in India. So which are the biggest myths that has been broken down over the years? The biggest myth I think was that you know normal delivery would be difficult and you know it wasn't going to be an easy process and it would uh, take its toll on the mother you know either when she was in labor or after delivery and you know I think that slowly that myth is breaking. Uh, because there's a, there are a lot of mothers who want normal deliveries now and they're, they're willing to you know do what it takes whether it is exercises whether it is you know reading up breathing techniques and uh, they're well read and they know now that normal delivery is not as bad as it was made to seem. Another myth actually which uh, goes around is you know c-sections are bad and women have to understand that you know uh, their best interest is what the doctor takes, so uh, keeps in mind. So it has to be done when you know required, and uh, definitely there are unnecessary C sections prevalent out there. But you have to trust your doctor to make the best decision for you. So when a woman is pregnant, um, most of the household uh, people tell her that uh, you know you should sit down, take rest, don't move, don't travel. So what is your opinion on it, like should she really take rest or you know, it, it, it's like a normal day to day activity that she should follow? Definitely you have to be extremely physically active during your pregnancy because not only the fact that you know pregnancy per se takes its toll on your body but if you're not going to be physically active as well, your body will not be able to cope with the changes that it goes through during pregnancy and women should put in that time and effort into exercising, eating a healthy diet and being active so you can climb steps, you can travel till you know almost 36 weeks of pregnancy um, and uh, you know you should just lead a normal life. I say you know pregnancy is not a disease, it's not a condition that you need to be worried about. It's a normal process, it's a natural process and you should just go with the flow. When a woman is pregnant, she gets a lot of attention and care from the people around her. But as soon as she delivers the child, what happens is um, the attention or the, the care gets diverted. And somehow, wantedly or unwantedly, um, they, uh, they go through a phase of ignorance that leads to depression. So what is your uh, suggestion to such mothers? That's a very pertinent question because, I, you know, like you said, the mother gets all the attention, you know, during a pregnancy and after that the attention completely shifts. I think it's also, you know, based a lot on expectations as well because it's natural if it's the first child in the family. A lot of pressure on mothers to deal with. I think a lot of the times women are told that the minute, you know, the baby is born, you should have that emotional connect with the child and, you know, you're not a mother if you don't feel that then you know a lot of women go into something called postpartum depression and you know we tend to identify it you know during the pregnancy itself for some women and we offer you know a lot of emotional support and counseling you know after delivery as well which and always the husband should be a part of it also it can't be just the mother who goes through that counseling i think it's important that relatives people around her you know people closest to her see a pattern, identify it and also, you know, uh, come forward to the doctor, let the doctor know so that, you know, some sort of emotional help can be provided as well. You're a gynecologist and a mother too, to a three-year-old. So how do you balance your career and um, still manage to give time to your child? You should make the time. If 
for yourself, for your children, you have whatever you can do it. Don't expect to be able to do it all the time. And even if you can't do it, you shouldn't feel guilty about it. But it's very important that you make that time, even if it means getting up in the morning, exercising for an hour or doing yoga, reading a book, but you need to make the time for yourself. That's the only way you'll be able to give yourself completely to you know what has to be done for the rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you.